Morning, First Love family. Devo time from the upper room here at First Love Church, sitting here with Nikki, my engineer. Um, Matt's in the other room doing what Matt does, fixing computer stuff, making things right. If you, uh, if you were watching online, was it Sunday that it was so bad? Yeah. yeah. If you were watching online Sunday, we all sincerely apologize. Um, the devil's in the technology, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> but we're going to get it figured out. We're going to get, eventually we're going to have the best live stream. But you know what, I, I've been listening to a lot of different live streams lately. And uh, um, man, none of them really seem to be all that good, frankly. I listened to a, a church on Sunday morning on my way here. And uh, no, I'm not going to go there. Uh, but today... Um, we're going to be looking at something that we are all are, are very familiar with, and uh, it's Mark 12:30, and it says, uh, "And you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength." This is the first commandment. And in verse 31, it says, "And the second is like it: you shall love the Lord your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these." And then it goes on in verse 33, it says, And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one neighbor as oneself is more than all of the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. You know, that's interesting because it, 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 I, was, I was driving along in my truck this morning on my way to a doctor's appointment, and uh, I was listening to uh, The Fish, and I was getting, like, irritated because I'm like, man, they just play the same songs over and over and over again. And, and I, I started to get cranky, and so then I put it on K-Wave, and it was a preacher that I, I don't particularly care for. Um, and uh, uh, and I, I, was, I, I was tantruming. And all of a sudden, I thought to myself, I thought, what the heck are you doing, Pastor Pete? And I realized that I was just, I was listening to the word of the Lord and the songs of the Lord and thinking about nothing but myself. And I was embarrassed. And I had to repent. I pulled my truck over. And I pulled into a parking lot uh, on, on Coast Highway. Um, right there at the Starbucks next to uh, Bayside and, and, uh, and Coast Highway. I pulled in there and I bowed my head and I repented before the Lord for my peevish and childish and disgusting attitude. And uh, I, I wasn't loving the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength. And... and, and 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 my soul i was concerned that the radio stations weren't playing what i wanted to hear maybe you get like that too i don't know probably you do i mean it's a human thing but this love that he's talking about here jesus is talking about here it, it, it's like it's an everything kind of love. It's a uh, put myself aside and think about the fact that I said this on Sunday. I said, he's taken us down off the cross where we belong and allowed himself to be beaten and hung up on the cross where he does not belong. He who knew no sin was made sin. Not just a sin, but the entire body of sin, the entire catalog of sin that's ever happened in the whole world by every human being, he took on his back for us. I should be grateful to even have a truck to drive with a radio that works. I should be grateful that I have gas to put in my truck when it costs $6.25 a stinking gallon. I should be grateful that I have a home to park it in front of. 
I should be grateful that I got to drop my 15-year-old daughter off at school this morning at 8 o'clock, and she said to her daddy, I love you so much. Man, I, I, I did that another time with my daughter, who's now 43, and I didn't do nearly as good a job. And fortunately, I have a full-on love relationship with her today. Restoration, repair, reconciliation, that's what God has brought to my life. I have a beautiful wife. I have a nice home. What the heck makes me think it's okay for me to get in my truck and drive down beautiful Coast Highway in beautiful Newport Beach and have a complaint about the songs they're playing on the radio or the preacher's preaching style? And you shall love the Lord your God, your God, your God. He's my God. He's your God. We should have him in our heart and in our mind all the time. He should be an ever-present comfort, an ever-present hope, an ever-present instructor, an ever-present teacher in every moment, every waking moment of our lives. It would be really even better if I, if I could, as I went to sleep at night, if I could say, Lord, can you talk to me while I'm sleeping? Fill my dreams. Just fill me all the time. And you know that neighbor of mine whose dogs drive me crazy? Oh, this neighbor of mine is dogs. He's got two Great Danes and a Frenchie. And they bark all day long. Yesterday I noticed that I kind of tuned them out. I was happy about it. I love these dogs. I go over and kiss them and hug them. And, but when I'm trying to write a sermon, I get mad. What? I guess what I'm trying to say to you guys is this love the Lord thing, it should be consuming. It should be an everything, every moment, all the time kind of deal. I shouldn't be having negative opinions. You know, I, I love it. My first sponsor told me as I, as I worked my third step, he goes, you know, doing this third step, making a decision to turn your will and your life over to the care of God, who is Jesus Christ, means you no longer have a right to an opinion of how your life is going. I want you to think about that. I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of my God, who is Jesus Christ, it means I no longer have a right to an opinion of how my day is going, of how my week's going, of how my I, I no longer have a right to an opinion of how my life is going, because I've given it to Him. Know that, and love Him, love Him with everything you've got. Love him night and day, winter and summer, spring and fall. Love him during the hard times. Love him during the good times. Sometimes I think we tend to forget him during the good times. We're standing on the mountaintop and the breeze is blowing in our hair. The fragrance of the cypress trees. I don't even know what a cypress tree smells like. Uh, but, 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 you know, uh, when we're down in the valley, we sure do love him. When we're down there on our face in the mud. But let's just love him all the time, you guys. We talked about it Sunday. What a great God and what an awesome privilege that he's called us. And, you know, he called you, particularly you. I'm not a Calvinist, but there's people that he didn't call. There's people whose hearts he knew were far from him and weren't going to change. But you, he knew, had a heart to receive the gospel and to believe. But let's don't ever go back to being that regular old person who just says, eh, uh, whatever. No. 
Let's be passionate about our, our purpose. Passion propelled purpose in Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's where we need to be. Pray with me now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. You are a great God, a gracious God, a loving God, and you have everything for us. And like that old song says, I know I'm prone to wander, wander from the God I love, or take my heart and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.